Hello and welcome back to RC Icons. So in this episode we're going to get the running gear in the Super Saber and get it out for a light run. I know I always say a light run and then I go out and beat the piss out of it. Well I don't beat the piss out of it but I do run them harder than I should. Um, I'm afraid to see what the wheels are going to look like when I'm done because I did paint these wheels silver um, in the last video. If you haven't seen the first two videos on this car, make sure you go back and take a look. So we did uh, the first video, we built the, the car up from a new unbox kit. And in the second video, we did the body, um, did all the detail work with the decals, the driver figure. And then I went off on a tangent and I sprayed the wheels silver and I did silver tire writing as well. So in this, in this episode, we're going to get, we've got the stock 540 motor in it. We have a servo in it already, so we're just got to get the ESC in it, um, get a receiver bound up, and uh, we'll get it out for a run. So let me bring the camera over real quick. We'll take a look at the car, and I'll show you what we're putting in it for running gear, and we'll get to it. All right, so now that I get the camera in position, so I'll show you the car real quick first. So we did the silver wheels. We painted them silver with um, a TS silver leaf, and then we did the silver tire writing. Now I haven't really cleaned these tires up too, too well yet as far as the tire writing. I still have a little bit of cleaning up to do. You can see a little mistake right there. But I know it's going to get trashed when I run it. So uh, it was more just to kind of show you guys the finished car 100% um, before we run it. But I know I'm going to have to address wheels and tires when I bring it back in. So like I said, we're going to get the running gear in this car. And the running gear of choice for me is my typical I've got my JX 9 kilo servo down in there and then I've got an ocean of room in this car but my hobby wing 1060 is what I typically use and I've got my uh, fly sky receiver which is tiny um, I love them because of that reason and then the other reason I love them even though it's got an antenna you can just tuck it down in there and you still get plenty of reception so yeah, this was a new unbox build, so it's 100% mint. So we're going to get some, some uh, painter's tape on the bottom of the chassis here, along with some Gorilla tape on top of it. And uh, we'll give this thing a run. And then my radio is the uh, NB Pro, NB4 Pro, Noble NB4 Pro. Um, it's, it's honestly an awesome receiver. They're a lot of money. Um, it's got the phone holder right on it, so it's just convenient for me, but it's ambidextrous, right? So you can kick it to a left-hand operation. The regular MB4 is also a great radio. I had that before this, and my son Caleb runs one. You can put like 20 models on that thing, and then the receivers are literally like the size of your thumb. And then the older receivers are antennaless. Um, so they're... And you can bind the old receivers to this. And then now they actually have 8-channel receivers, so that you can go up to 8 channels on this radio now. Uh, which is crazy for a pistol grip. So it's cool because you can run a semi truck or something on it. But I digress. So yeah, we're going to get the running gear in this. And uh, we're going to get take it out for a run and see how the Super Saber does. So uh, I'll bring you back in just a second when we've got the car up and running and ready to go. So I was just starting to get the running gear together on this. And the bottom arm snapped. And if you look at the top arm, that's broken here, 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 and here. Four different spots. You can see that that thing is cracked. Now, when I put this thing together, I was so gentle because these plastics are just that brittle. So, um, I know this is supposed to be a running video, but... I'm going to have to postpone this and order some arms for a boomerang and uh, get this fixed. Because this is not going to last 20 seconds. Even if I replace the bottom arm, the top arm, it's just a matter of time. That's going to snap in a second. So I'll see you back here in just a second. But it'll probably be a couple of weeks um, by the time I get these parts in and get it fixed. Um so it is what it is. I'll see you back in a second with some parts and we'll get this thing fixed. All right. So it's been, uh, it's funny. It's only been like, what, two days since this happened. Thank you, uh, TTP now, TTP, Tony's Tamiya Parts. 
I had already had a set of boomerang arms on order from my broken purple boomerang in my glass cabinets. It's funny because I get comments all the time. You need to fix that car. Yeah, well, <laughs> I get it. Um, I had ordered a set of front arms already to fix that one. Um, and it's actually going to become a winger. Because I don't need another boomerang. Um, I've got two new unbox originals. One's going to get built on the show and the other one's going to stay new unbox. So I figured I'd turn that one into a winger. And I've actually got an original winger uh, Tamiya body kit for it. I've got a TBG winger body and MCI decals as well. But uh, we're going to go with the original body set and uh, make a, an original winger. So I had already had a set of arms coming in. So I ordered another set. So this was the arms that I had ordered probably a week and a half before I realized that these ones were broken. And this top one is definitely cracked. See? Done. That wasn't going to take much outside. Um, yeah, I already had a set on order. So literally it's been a day. So what I did was I changed the both top and bottom arm on that side. Everything looks good now. Uh, I got the radio gear in it, which is where we were when I realized that it was broken. So if I plug this in and power it up, we've got throttle. And then we've got steering. So this one's ready to go. Um, of course, receiver first. So I'm going to get the body put on this thing. And I will see you outside in a second. All right, we're out this morning with the Super Saber from 1989. Running the stock 540 on 2S. This is a new build. This car's never been reread. Give it a little tar shakedown before we bring it to the dirt. Runs good. Tracks nice and straight. Looks great in the sun. Got the original dual blocks that came in the kit sporting the silver wheels that I painted it's a little cold out this morning it's about 32 degrees Fahrenheit here in the northern US getting late late into fall winter's coming I want to try to get some of these cars out and run so that I can give you some running videos for the winter I don't like running in the snow. So, and uh, winter's come about a month early on us. Usually this time of year, it's low 50s, high 40s during the day, and in the 30s at night. In the last two weeks, it's been in the 20s at night and low 40s during the day. So, although there's still a month left in the calendar fall, it's uh, getting kind of cold for this stuff but she's running good. Nice and straight. So we'll bring it to location number two and we'll get it in the dirt. See you in a second. All right, we're at location two with the Super Saber from 1989. Looking forward to this one. So we're on some light gravel. It's a little bit frozen because it's getting cold out here. So we're not going to get a whole lot of dirt kicking up. Try not to break it here. She goes good though. Ooh, little jumps.
<laughs> oh, this takes me back to being a kid every single time I run a car. You know, I tell people all the time that I'm more into the building side of this hobby. I'm a wrencher, I love it. Which is why I build semi trucks. Um, that's part of the fun for me, right? We're all modelers at heart, but when we get them out for a run like this, boy, I turn 12 all over again. Absolutely love it. Look at that thing, it tracks perfectly straight. Some donuts. Love it. <laughs> to be 12 again. Oh, it runs great. It's too bad that this came out in 89 because it was competing with the Thunder, I mean 87, I'm sorry. It was competing with the Thundershot, right? So your last boomerang chassis car comes out the same year as the new car or the new chassis. Everybody wants what's new, right? So the Thundershot, the, the Super Sabre really didn't stand a chance. People had already been running the boomerang for a year and a half when this came out. And everybody wanted the new, newest and greatest, right? But this car is awesome. And for the people that hate the car because of the way the body looks, you absolutely need to get in front of one because this thing is awesome. The looks of it are awesome. Look at that thing. It just looks awesome. So much fun. But I'm going to have to wrap this up. Going to the shelf, boys. The Super Sabre from 1987. What a car. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. That uh, that was an awesome run. The donuts and everything. <laughs> what a car. Um, this, uh... Yeah, paint's flaking off the wheels on this side. I just happened to notice it. I was going to say, it went, went got through pretty good. But it's uh, it's coming off. No big deal. We'll shoot them again. Um, so yeah, the run was awesome. Uh, I had a blast. The uh, the boomerang chassis, like I said when I was running it, absolutely a great great running chassis. So just like I said, this this car has always kind of gotten a bum deal. Um, being released in 1987, in in basically the same time as the, the Thundershot coming out. Of course, everybody was going after the Thundershot because it was a new chassis. But for a four-wheel drive car, this thing handled great. Um, it was awesome. It was so much fun to run. So, yeah, I hope you guys like this build series on the Super Sabre. Hopefully, we'll see this thing again sometime soon. I mean, Tammy had just released the Hot Shot 2. I've got mixed feelings about it. I don't want this video to be about the Hot Shot 2. Uh, release that's coming out but I I mean my two cents I, I think they could have done more I, I would have liked to have seen the original first before the blockhead edition and then the blockhead edition in itself is kind of uh, piss poor in in my opinion um, if it had been the pictures the first pictures that were released of blockheads actual hotshot 2 in the red and white scheme uh, like the STP logo or livery that that one i thought looked great but the other one is just i mean it's a carbon copy essentially of the wild one no disrespect to tamia or blockhead motors i just think that they could have done a whole lot more with that and, and just missing another opportunity and i still think that they should have come out with the hot shot too first i mean it's like what are they doing dancing a carrot in front of us i mean it's total garbage to be completely honest it's kind of upsetting um so yeah, I mean, obviously if the Hot Shot 2 with red plastics was released and not the one that is being released, then we would know that the Super Saber would soon be coming, but at this point, who knows what we'll see, if anything. Um, I feel like they're just toying with us, and that's unfortunate. 
But yeah, this car in itself, uh, total 180. Um, when I bought the cars, I only bought the Super Saber because I was completing the Hotshot family of cars that I already had. I couldn't have all of the Hotshots um, family cars along with the Big Wig and the Boomerang without, with not having the Super Saber. And now it, I'll have the winger as well. I've got an, a Tamiya original winger body set that we're going to be putting on the, the, the dilapidated boomerang over here um, in a video coming soon. So, uh, yeah, we'll have literally the entire family. And I have got them all in new and box, including the Mach 1 and Mach 2 original hot shots. I've got new and box for my new and box kit. So yeah, I've got I've got that family of cars pretty well wrapped up. But when I bought the Super Saber, it was literally just a to complete the family of cars. It wasn't because I liked it, loved it. I didn't really know a whole lot about it. It had that futuristic design, but I based on the box, I was eh, whatever. In front of me, absolutely awesome. And then some cars are like that. Um, I'm sure you guys will agree that there's cars that you just never had love for. But if you saw it in the flesh, you'd probably change your mind. Some of you in the comments have said that with the Super Saber, that car does nothing for me. And I'm telling you right now, if you had it in front of you or you were running it around in front of you, you would have probably absolutely change your mind. So that's going to wrap up this video series on the Super Saber. I hope you liked it. Um, I'm going to take this thing uh, back apart. I, I say take it apart. The chassis is still mint. Everything is perfectly clean on it other than the fact that the wheels need to, the tires need to be cleaned up and the wheels need to be shot silver again. Um, a lot of people were saying to just wait and get a set of the blockhead hotshot two wheels that are silver and just put them on there. That may be something that I do. Because the paint is flaking off of these pretty good. And I prime these too. But whatever. It is what it is. If you're not already subscribed. Make sure you subscribe. And turn on your notifications. We've got some giveaways coming up. Christmas is just around the corner. Um, I'm not sure if this video will go out before Christmas or not. But you're going to want to be subscribed for the giveaways. But also get your notifications turned on. Because the winger is coming. Um, relatively quick. And then uh, we've got a bunch of two-wheel drive racing buggies that I'm building at the moment. So you're not going to want to miss those. So until next time, we'll see you soon. Thanks.